Hey, what's going on everybody? Gary here, FCP Euro. We're going to show you a um, interesting design feature on many uh, new BMWs or newer BMWs in terms of how the drive shaft is coupled to the differential. It's not a typical U-joint or CV joint that we all come to know and love. It's a giant 50 millimeter locking nut that has to uh, interface with the drive shaft and also the pinion nut of the um, rear differential. So if you look here, we have this big old 50 millimeter nut right in here between the 12 point nut on the differential pinion and the drive shaft. This is basically like a nut that squeezes down on the drive shaft. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes off. Uh, this is not specifically how to do this on an X5, it just happened to be under a 2017 X5. Obviously, to get to the drive shaft, it's going to vary on the model. Um, in this particular case, we're using this uh, drive shaft counter hold tool from All German Auto. It basically holds onto the U-joint in the center of the drive shaft near the center support, which is going to allow us to break torque on this nut. This nut's torqued to 100 newton meters from the factory. It needs to be rotated as you're facing in a clockwise direction. From here, it's going to look like you're tightening it, but actually from the backside, which is how this threads, it's actually counterclockwise like a traditional nut. But if you're looking at the nut, it needs to go in a clockwise position. If you go in a counterclockwise position, you'll tighten the nut, you'll damage the 12 point nut, and you'll probably need to replace the drive shaft at that point. So you don't want to do that. At this point, we have the drive shaft uh, properly secured with that um, center lock here. And we're going to use the 50 millimeter crow's foot wrench from All German Auto to break this nut free. And we're going to show you how this interface works. Leverage is your friend here, of course. So I went ahead and uh, kept turning that 50 millimeter nut in the clockwise position as I was facing the differential. Uh, up until now, we have pretty much all the threads exposed on the drive shaft. Uh, obviously put the counter hole back in to get to that point. A lot of resistance at first, and that's because of the thread sealant and Loctite that's used on this encapsulated nut. Um, it cures, it hardens. I mean, it's doing its job. It's not supposed to allow for that nut to ever loosen. Um, so it worked. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really know how you would actually break that nut free without a tool like this. Um, it makes that much easier because there's quite a bit of force required. And there we go. That is the drive shaft out. And uh, you can kind of see right here. Uh, I mean, I know that looks like it's bad, but that's actually the Loctite that cures. You can see the splined portion here. It goes with the spline here on the input shaft. And this nut right here is floating, held in by this plastic retainer. Uh, what it does is it essentially crimps down on this collar and uh, holds the drive shaft in place. It actually pulls the drive shaft in a little bit. Um, so as I was loosening, I was pushing the drive shaft back out. Uh, but on these drive shafts, the center portion uh, is actually collapsible. Uh, so what, what this ends up doing is it not only pushes down on the uh, portion here of the drive shaft so that it's tight, but also sets the length so that it can't possibly come loose. It's a interesting design. I personally am not a fan of it for several reasons because you do need those special tools in order to do it. But from a manufacturing standpoint, uh, that's only one faster to take care of as opposed to four or six or eight. So I'm sure it cuts down on time and it also sort of removes any ambiguity as to when it's actually installed properly. Uh, so our encapsulated nut right here, you can see it's just floating. Uh, we need to replace it, it's only one time use. So I'm gonna pry this plastic retainer off. This is basically what holds the nut in place. And then there's this little sort of rubber seal, if you would. And then the nut comes out like so. So just remember when you're putting it back together, 
this black seal sits on the flange of the nut and then this blue cap basically holds it all together. It literally is just floating within the pinion nut of the differential. And this is a very common design on many newer BMWs. So the reason we're doing this specifically is if you see this nut, this is your removal process. This is what you have to do. Whatever you do, do not touch this 12 point nut because that is in fact the pinion nut for the differential. And if you were to mess this or damage this nut, uh, you just made your day a lot worse. So here is the new drive shaft lock nut. Uh, you can actually see the groove right here. That's where this little rubber seal needs to sit. So I'm going to go ahead and just pre-install it. It's relatively flexible, so it'll go into place. Uh, before I reinstall this, I'm going to go ahead and just clean up some of that extra grease. I am going to grease the um, splines here on the input shaft of the transmission before uh, reinstalling the drive shaft. Um, but I just wanted to slip that on now, show you. Go ahead and reinstall the new nut. You need to make sure that this little seal ends up behind or like inside the pinion nut. There's like a groove in there for it. So we'll just kind of push it into place. Kind of have to play around with it a little bit. And then all that we have left is to put on this retaining cap, which just clicks into place like that. Uh, so at this point, uh, obviously to tighten the nut, it's the inverse of what we did to remove it. So when you're facing it, you need to go counterclockwise instead of clockwise. And uh, the final torque spec on this is 100 newton meters, but we need to get it bottomed out first. Um, I will say that by cleaning all the threads off on the drive shaft, that has made installation much easier. But there's a little bit of resistance that we're dealing with here. So we'll just thread away until all the threads on the drive shaft disappear and then we'll get the torque wrench. So uh, torque spec on the nut is 100 newton meters, uh, but because we have this torque adapter, it's 1.2 to one. So my actual spec on the torque wrench is 84 newton meters, which roughly will come out to 100 newton meters, just a little bit over, but still within. Yeah, in summary, that's how you would remove and reinstall a drive shaft on one of these cars that uses the 50 millimeter nut on the differential pinion shaft. It is a goofy design, but it is extremely common on all the F chassis BMWs, late model E chassis BMWs, and it's moved on also into the G chassis cars now as well. Um, BMW does sell the 50 millimeter crow's foot, but this one from AGA, um, which we carry, is a much tighter snug fit on that 50 millimeter nut. <laughs> Um, I could tell you from uh, previous experience that 50 millimeter uh, style Villa crow's foot that BMW sells as their special tool tends to slip off the nut, particularly under high torque loads. So this is a much more snug fit. And then the other special tool here was the torque adapter that then allows you to use a traditional half inch drive tool instead of having to use the style Villa 18 by 14 millimeter drive and torque wrench and all that stuff. So uh, these two together, particularly if you're doing a lot of this type of service work, uh, you'll want these and then also this uh, drive shaft lock, very, very useful to hold the U-joint of the drive shaft while you brake torque on that nut because obviously at 100 newton meters plus the thread sealant, um, they do not come off easily and I would not want to rely on the parking pole of the transmission to you know, do this. Um, so the ability to throw the transmission in neutral, lock it in place by the center support and then be able to you know, basically put as much force in the nut as you need to, to get it to come off. Um, definitely a much better situation. That's from all German auto as well. But really, in my opinion, you really need these three tools in order to do this job. Um, I don't really know of any workarounds, honestly. So, um, but yeah, if you see that 50 millimeter nut, this is what you're in for. And then obviously the rest of it, putting the car back together, it's gonna be totally dependent on the car that you're working on. We didn't even cover that on this because the only focus was on this design drive shaft.